name of Jesus. Mighty God, we come before you, humble as we know how. Father, now we come to give you honor, we come to give you all the glory, we come to give you all the praise. God, because it's due unto your name. We just want to thank you for being in your midst today, mighty God. We just want to thank you for traveling mercy, oh God, for bringing us here and saying, come to the Almighty God. Lord, we just want to thank you for your Sabbath day of Christ, mighty God, that we can come into your midst to be refreshed in the name of Jesus. Father God, you have kept us through six days of Father's day, and here we are. Oh, mighty God, as we come, help us to come with a purpose today, mighty God. Help us to come with a praise in the name of Jesus. Help us to come, oh God, with our heart. Lift it up to give you all the time that you work.
song, and it reads, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, uh -huh. and, the, and the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the sea, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend in the hills of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had a clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sown deceitful, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be he lifted up, he everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come. In. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. afternoon is standing on the promises and the words are on the whatsapp chat group standing on the promises of christ my king through eternal ages let his praises ring glory in the highest i will shout and sing standing on the promises of god Amen. standing on the promises of christ my king through eternal ages and his praise is true.
when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity. And if thou call thy soul to hunger, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy cry much purity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee shall build thee a waste places. Thou shalt raise up a foundation of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repair of the breach, to restore the path to the wilderness. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then they shall have a like that self in the Lord, and I will cause thee to fight upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which in heaven is perfect. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1 16. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Song, I'm going back to Jesus. <laughs> Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, 
Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nor is my servant, nor is great servant, nor is ox, nor is ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. So we get the law, including James 7 chapter, verses 10, 11, and 12. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. I love thy kingdom, Lord.
because he's my friend. You know that he's my guide. Because whatever I'm doing, I'll try to put him before and say, Lord, let me just stay behind, but you just go before. You know, even on the parking, sometimes I can't get out of the parking. And when I reach, I say, Lord, I forget to ask him to provide a parking for me. And I apologize. Mm-hmm. That to tell you the relationship that he, me and my father have. Mm-hmm. I apologize. I said, sorry, I forgot to, to, to ask him for a reach. That's, right. That's the way it, listen, in all thy ways acknowledge him. Yeah. Yeah. And he shall and he will. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. pray my strength in the Lord because I mean well. And I don't just want it for me, I want it for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that one glorious day when he appears, some of us are not there. Yeah. But I tell you the reality, I say I want to be the number that the saints go marching in. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be, it's a waste of time to come in here Sabbath after Sabbath and when, when he appears, my name is not written. Oh, yeah. The Lamb Book of Life, I want to be with my God. Yeah. I want to be him, I want to hear him. <laughs> As my Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah. So I don't care about the flesh. Because this going to fail. Oh, yeah. yes. I just want to I want him to stamp his own image yeah. deep in my heart. Because yeah. I want to live for him. Come what may, I'm going to stand up on the promises of Christ my Savior. Pray my strength in the Lord and happy to see you all. Love you all. In Jesus' name. Yes, it's a day that the Lord has made, and I will be going to be loving.
you know, and, and I said, God, I just want to give you thanks that hope it can work. Because yeah. maybe if I wasn't in, in my house still, I don't know what would happen. But thanks be to God, I'm in his house. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
Sabbath that he allowed me to see another opportunity just to enter his gates one more time. We just thanksgiving in my heart and with praise in my soul. I want to thank God for his many blessings that he bestowed upon me. I want to thank God for providing me with a new job. And everyone knows I haven't worked because of the pandemic and, you know, everybody knows I worked at Panera and a lot of things had to stop because I worked in the city. And from March of 2020 to November of this year, I haven't had a job to clock in, even though I have other responsibilities. But I thank God for sustaining me through all that. I thank God that I was able to pay my car insurance on time, sustain time. Like, I never had to beg and borrow because, because God provided. And I just thank God for it. And I thank God because the job that God provided me with, a stranger offered me a job. Somebody I don't even know. I didn't apply, didn't ask. By chance, I went into a place and man said, come look and see what it is. And when I walked out, somebody chased me up the block. And me being who I am, I turned around like, who's chasing me up the block? And um, the guy said, hey, I just want to offer you a job. I didn't even say I didn't have a job. So I would like to offer you a job. And I was like, oh, I'm on the phone. And he's like, well, come back. And I went home and I said, dad, some strange guy offered me a job. And he was like, go back and see. For him to say that, I was shocked. But I went back and the guy was like, I just want to give you a job. And the very next day, he sent me for an interview. And I didn't even need a reference because God was my reference. Oh, yeah. And I was saying like, God, I do this with you because these are strangers. Not even of my same like nationality, but they saw something in me. And I didn't have to ask, but God provided. And I know that during Tabernacle, I kept saying, God, the other week, Benjamin Johnson said, shout out things that you needed. And I was saying, God, I didn't want this year to go out without me being able to work because I knew that I needed to start working again. And I was like, God, you're just so amazing. And when we learn to be obedient when the preacher is telling us to do stuff, God works just instantaneously. And I just thank God for it. So I went to Where work. is that job? <laughs> that job was around the corner from my house. I don't got across no street. Oh, yeah. God is so good. Like directly around the corner and I'm still able to take college to school. And it was so nice. I told them what I do at the school. They was like, you could give the school this number. They have to reach you so you could be uh, accessible to the school. And I was like, God, you're just that amazing. That you show, they said, so shall I find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And my favorite scripture is Proverbs 3 and 6. And all that ways acknowledge him. Because it was a half a day that I walked on uh, from school that I'm walking this time of day past this place. And it was their first day that they opened. And I was like, God, in all my ways acknowledge you. And you shall direct my path. And I'm just so grateful to God. So pray. I'm doing administrative work, something that's second nature. They're like, you ever done this before? I'm like, I do it on a regular. But God found fit to do this. And I'm just thanking God because he's just been so merciful to me. And all that I've been going through, even mentally, I was like, God, I know this was you. And the Sabbath school lesson was about Gideon. He had to ask when the fleece was the ground dry, the fleece was wet. And I said, I'm not even going to ask you nothing, God, because I knew it was you. I'm not going to even question you because I just, you kept putting stuff in place where they never second guess nothing, never ask, never question. And one lady didn't even know me and said, I will give you a reference just because of how well I see you do at your orientation. I was like, God, thank you that a stranger wanted to give me references. So I just want to sing this song and just because I'm just that grateful. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
wrong to this. Lord, I'm so grateful.
different ways. And there's so many things that I can say. But this afternoon, I just want to say I thank God for a sound mind. I thank God for peace of mind. I thank God for the house of God and the family that he has given me. This afternoon, I am grateful for the time that I spent here. Amen. It's, it, you know, um, sometimes you take things for granted. You're in a situation or you are in a place and because you're so used to what is happening around you, it just seems that it's a normal and it's okay. But let me tell you something, things of God. It's good to stand in unity. Yes. And I want to tell you this afternoon that no matter what you are going through, no matter what comes up against you, stand in unity. Because in unity there is strength. And the chain is as deep as it's strong. As strong as it's Live. You know, this afternoon I just want to say, I thank God that I met Jesus. My
because we can't even walk without him holding our hand. He is our everything. And we know that he is our deliverer. We know that he is our provider. And most of all, we know that he is our healer.
Central. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for allowing us to come here safely. We thank you for traveling mercies, God. We thank you for bringing us across the highways and the byways, God. We thank you for allowing us to get to your temple to give you the praise, God. The many who didn't make it in God, we thank you that we are able to make it into the house of the Lord. God, we come before you praying for those who cannot be here. Pray for those who, who, who are unable to leave their doors, who are shut in, who are too sick to even come into your doors. God, we ask that you be with them in the midst, God. We ask that wherever they are, that you be there, God. You touch their bodies. Touch their aim and ailments, God. Touch, touch their injury, whatever it may be, God. We ask that you touch them in the name of Jesus, God. We ask that you bring them out. Make them whole, God. We ask that there are those who are here. There are those who are unable to have the strength that they will want, God. We ask that you support them, God. We ask that you touch their body. Raise them up, God. God, give them the strength to go on, God. We ask that you heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. We know that by your stripes we are healed, and God, we ask that you heal, Lord. We ask that you heal, Lord. We ask that you heal, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, touch their body. Touch their body, Lord. Touch their body, Lord. Touch their body. Wherever they are hurt, wherever they are broken, we ask that you kneel down with your hand, with your healing hand, God. We touch their body and heal them, Lord. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen.
feeling so tender with the pain. And I don't know what is going on in the but he's got it. to Chief Apostle, Apostle Clark and uh, the Assistant Apostle, uh, Apostle Daly. To Apostle Evans, uh, my heart goes out for him. He's a very, very good man. I've always seen you guys on video from Cincinnati, Ohio, but to be in the presence, it's like a thousand times more powerful. Uh, the singing and the atmosphere is great. Uh, wanted my family to come. They didn't bring anything for church. I told them just come along, but they wouldn't come. And uh, they missed out. <laughs> I really enjoyed myself here. You have a wonderful apostle here. Uh, I met him and his wife at Tracy Williams' wedding. I don't know if they remember that. Uh, I told Tracy, you know, I didn't like uh, certain things, so she set me at the table. I didn't even know that I would be sitting close to Apostle Evans. Uh, I knew Bishop Woods. He was one of my favorite Apostle Board members. Amen. And God years ago. And so we got to talking, and then he explained the relationship. And that was the first time I really met you, Apostle Evans, face to face. And so then later on, we, we came to New York for my wife and I anniversary about five years ago, but we couldn't get in touch with anybody about coming to church. So. I went back home, talked to a couple people, Tracy Williams, uh, Shirley Williams, who's my, my uh, Shirley uh, Brand, who is my sister-in-law, I talked to her, and they gave me uh, the number and I called you, and so he said, man, when you come, you just call me no matter what time it is, and I'm like, yeah, right, you know, because usually when people say, uh, I'm going to be there for you, just call me, but lo and behold, I called him, and he's been available for me since I've been in New York, and I really appreciate that your directions and uh, looking after me and uh, my family. We really appreciate it. Look guys, I am from Cincinnati, Ohio and I am so used to you guys praising him. So I see the praise on the internet, but feeling the praise is a lot more better than it is on the internet. And, uh, my wife just texted me and she's like, I need you to come back before it gets dark. But before I leave here, if you New York people can praise God with a Cincinnati guy and just stand on your feet and give the Almighty a praise and say hallelujah!
testimony and let us continue doing what we do, the way we do, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God be the glory. Just thank you, God. What do we say? What do we say? Brother, we say, we don't do that because you're here. Yeah. We do it because why? God! God.
just saying that the word of the Lord is coming. And we know we should desire his words even more than our necessary food because that is how we grow spiritually. And today we have our minister Brooks who is our preacher, but we're going to have music ministry by our Deacon Lloyd. Amen. 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 Deacon Lloyd. Music ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. Bless the Lord.
God is great yes. and greatly to be great. It's going to start to think of the goodness of Jesus. I want to hear you talk about the things that he has done for you. And I know the things that he has done for me. From the bottom of my heart and from the depths of my soul, I give him the praise that he's so right on this earth. Because he's worthy of all praise. And I know I just have to come to praise the Lord. Oh, no. With my hands lifted up. Yes. And my mouth filled with praise. Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elisha said unto Elijah, 
Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Bethel, and Elijah said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as my son liveth, I will not leave thee. Mm -hmm. So they went down to That's Bethel. It. All right, we're there with me. Thank you. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away that master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah. I know it. Mm -hmm. Old in your peace. And Elisha said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee. For the Lord had sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away that master from thy head today? And he answered and said, Yes, I know it. Hold be your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry here, I pray thee. Tarry, I pray thee here. For the Lord had sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord will, and as Thy soul liveth. I will not leave thee. Yes. And they too went, went on. on. And fifty of the men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to the view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters that were divided thither and thither. Ither and tither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elisha said unto Elijah, Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion mm -hmm. of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou was asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up, by a whirlwind, into heaven. We're here the reading of this portion of the word. Right. So, my topic for today is determination. All right. And my top 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 topic is how determined are you to hold on to Jesus? All right, all right. I like to give you a money minute to think. I like the thought process. How determined are you to hold on to Jesus? Mm -hmm. We're in November. Am I right? Yes. yes. And next month will be December. And after December we have January. January. And living in New York, January is special, right? Mm -hmm. Especially with the first of January and the last of December. Mm -hmm. That's right, New York. Yeah. In New York City. That's right. In Times Square. A lot of excitement is there. Yeah. Because everyone, or most people, want to be there live and direct. Yeah. To bid the one year goodbye uh -huh. and to usher in another year yes 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 and they will go through anything that they need to go through in order to be at the location yeah. in times square yeah. whether it's rain that's right whether it's snowing or it's zero below yeah. cold yeah. they know how to get dressed <laughs> to be there they would go from early yeah. to secure a spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
They are not leaving to buy food because they're carrying their food. That's preparation. They're not even going to the bathroom because they take care of those bathroom needs already. A lot of dependents sold out. Because they are being prepared for that occasion. How determined are you to hold on to Jesus? And the crowd is so determined because when you go there, sometimes you can't move. You just have to stay at that spot right. for a long period of time. Yeah. Hold or not hold. And the thing is that those you are with have to stay near to you so that you can find everyone so that they're not lost in the crowd. Yeah. And we see that type of determination just to be there and even to get that kiss at 12 midnight. People will take their companion, whether it's for borrows or lend or for them for true, but they took them there to get that midnight excitement. And that's how they're determined to come. Hey. To hold on to Jesus. Yeah. Determination. In order to have determination, you have to make a decision. You have to have a goal, an intention, something that you want to achieve. In life, we make a lot of decisions. Yeah. You make a lot of decisions. Coming to church, I'm not coming to church. That's a decision. I'm wearing this dress, I'm not wearing this outfit. That's a decision. I want to eat steak tonight, I don't want to eat steak tonight. That's a decision. And so we make decisions, decisions, decisions. Some of them we hold on to them, some of them we let them go. But how determined are we? to hold on to Jesus. Yeah. We make decisions which college we want to go. We make decisions about our career choices. We make decisions who we want to marry and who we don't want to marry. We make decisions how we want our perfect partner to be. Every chest, old leg, whatever you have. But we make decisions where that is concerned. Oh the greatest decision yeah, yeah. we could ever make in life is the decided to follow Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And how determined are we to hold on to that decision? Yeah. Take a minute and think about it. I look at the word determination, and it's a fixed intention or resolution to overcome an obstacle or achieve something that is difficult. To be resolute in what we want to do something and won't let anything get in our way to get that something. That's right. Have you ever been in love and you see a girl or, or on the other side you see a boy and you say, oh, I really want that person to be my wife or I want that person to be my husband and you do everything on the night, on the phone, the whole night. You want to be there with that person because we're determined to get that person's attention. And you go through lengths. Sometimes you can't even go to work because you want that person's attention. So to be determined, it has to be purposeful. There must be a purpose. You need to persevere to be resilient. That means you have, need to have the ability to bounce back and be persistent in achieving your intended desire or goal. So a determined person is driven by firmness of purpose. Mixed with firm decisions. Focus every energy and effort and ability on their purpose to, do, to achieve the desire.
higher goal. What is your goal in Christ? Is it to come to church every day and have a good time? What is our goal in Christ? First, to be determined. Our decisions, our intentions, we have to stick to them. We can't just make them and leave them and leave them behind or take them slight. Because in this life, we set many goals, many, many decisions, many goals. And sometimes they say, okay, you can set smart goals, smart goals that are pleasurable and you can uh, observable and all those goals. And you write them down and you set them down, but are you achieving those goals? Mm -hmm. How determined are you to achieve those goals? A lot of talk is about, a lot of saying is about, but the doing part of it, that's the meat and potatoes of the matter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. People make decisions. And this is one of the decisions that people make of, of most times. There's people in my family, oh, I'm, I don't even want to call my daughter again. But she's the one to lose weight. <laughs> and, all right, they, it takes determination to lose weight, you know. It takes commitment, it takes persistence, and it takes perseverance to resist the temptation of your favorite food and to follow the routine or the process, not only to lose the weight, but also to maintain the new weight. Hey! Same with an athlete. They have to endure rigorous training, strength training, core training, the abs training, the legs training because you need strong legs, the breathing, and breathing is a part of uh, I'm running, you know. You have to breathe properly. The speed, you have to do speed training. You have to do training with the movements of your arms because they help with your, your speed and your movement to maintain that fitness and health to compete in their desired championship race. How determined are you to hold on to Jesus? Serving Jesus is a lifestyle. It's a walk of life. It's not a walk over. It's a walk with Jesus and walk in Jesus. Determination. I make up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I would like to sing the nice songs. And they touch your heart when you sing the goodbye world. I say no longer with you. I made up my mind. And we sing, I am determined to hold out to, to, hold out to the head. Jesus. Because I know Jesus is with me. On oh, him I, I, him I him. can depend. But when we go outside and somebody tell a lie on us, can we still see that I'm determined to hold out to the head? Mm -hmm. I've hazarded our lives falsely. Can we still, are we still determined to hold on to the end? Back to the scripture that I read before. Second Kings 2, verse 1 to 30. Elisha was traveling with his master. Elisha was traveling with his master, Elijah. He was fully aware of the fact that Elijah would be taken away from him. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, he made that decision to go along with Elijah. He had an intention, he had a goal, and he had a purpose. Yes. He did not discuss it with anybody else, but he was determined. Yes. Because he had a decision, he set a goal, and he was working towards it. Yes. He was so fixed. He was so focused. He was so determined to fulfill that purpose and would not be swayed by any human advice. My God. And as they traveled, Elisha said to him, Tarry here, I pray thee, 
For the Lord had sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said unto him, I can imagine he said, Master, as the Lord has sent you to Bethel, live it. And as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. Yes. I can imagine Elisha is saying himself, but, but I, I'm going to leave. But he, with the determined make of mine, he said that whether you're leaving or not, I am not leaving you. So Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as, my, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave it. And so they went on to Bethel. And they're walking down to Bethel. And at Bethel, the sons of the prophets came forth and met Elijah. And they said to Elijah too, Don't you know that your master will be taken away from you today? Mm. And in late terms, I would say, ah, I know that. Yeah. But he said, yes, yeah, I know it. Hold in your peace. Leave it alone. I know what I'm doing. And Elijah said to him again, The Lord has sent me down to Jericho. And Elisha, Elisha responded, The same way. You notice that his answer did not change. When you are determined and you make a decision, you don't sway. You hold on to what you believe in. And if everything else is falling, not you. Because you're holding on to what you know. And that's why the songwriter said that on Christ, the solid rock I stand, that all other ground must be sinking sand. Yes. Amen. Yes. And even when the sons of the prophet came and said the same thing to him, his answer remains the same. Yeah. And so when we accept Christ, and we're saying yes to Christ, yes. it's not a yes, no, flip-flop, yes, no, flip-flop. Yes. It's sticking to your answer. If you're saying yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, I will trust you and obey. It is a yes, and your yes must be a yes, and your no must be a no. But you have to Spirit of God. Yeah. 
But he said, nevertheless, you have to do something. It just doesn't come like that. Amen. You have to be an alert. Yes. You have to be watching. Yes. You have to have something in you to show that you really need it. Yes. So, if you see me when I'm going, it will be done to you. But if you're not watchful enough and you don't see me, it will not happen. So you can imagine what went through Elisha's mind. I come thus far. I, I, I need to get what I come for. I'm not giving up right now. Come too far from where I've started. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I know God has brought me thus far to leave me. I know I didn't come so far to go back home empty. And so I come with my intention that I'm going to go up filled with the Spirit till all shall see Christ only, always living in me. So he decided that I can't mess up now. No. So I have to be on the alert. This is my breakthrough. I have red signals all around me. That this is my time. So they traveled and they talked. And there appeared the chariot of fire, horses of fire, and parted both them asunder. But you know what? That don't really get me. A chariot of fire. Probably has never seen a chariot of fire before. And probably has never seen fire in that way with horses of fire. I would be gazing on the horses of fire and say, oh, that is so good. But he was looking on Elisha because that's where his eyes and his eyes should be. He's not seeing the chariots of fire. He's not seeing the horse of fire, but seeing Elijah himself. Yeah. Yeah. What are we looking at? Yeah. What is taking our attention? Yeah. Yes. That's right. My God. And so when he saw him, he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And the mantle fell, and he took the mantle, and he went back in the power that he just received, yes. and did the same thing he, his, his master did, yes. to go back over Jordan. Hallelujah. That is great determination, my yes. brothers and yes. sisters. Yes. That's fixed determination beyond human advice. Elijah made that decision that he was going to follow Elijah. He had something that Elijah needed. And Elijah would stop at nothing to get it. Neither advice from Elijah himself, nor the advice from the prophets. He was so fixed on his intentions and his decision, fixed on his desires and his goals. And you see the result? was he was empowered. He got that double portion that he sought. Oh, yes. If he turned back or about the journey, you might not have received what he had. Yes. One lesson we can learn from him today is that determination, perseverance, and being purposeful, focused, and alert pays off. Yes. Yes. There is a reward. Amen. How determined are we to follow Christ? My God. Let's just look again at our determination in spite of persecution. And we know persecution is a given. Right? We yes. can't get around it. It's a given. But we can be determined through persecution. Yes. In Acts 6 and verse 7, Stephen, or Stephen, whatever you want to call it, a man full of the Holy Ghost, faith, wisdom, power, 
wrought a lot of miracles. He was chosen to assist the apostles to serve tables in the administration of the widows. He did great miracles and wonders among the people. However, he was falsely accused and arrested for speaking blasphemous words against the holy place, against Moses, against um, the, the God, and against, um, against God. Stephen, in his discourse towards them, he referred them to as sick necked and uncircumcised in heart, that yes. to resist the Holy Ghost as their fathers did. Wow. When they heard that, they were so upset, they got so hungry, then they stopped there, ran on him, cut, take him out of the city, stone Stephen. But God was with Stephen. Yes. And he called upon God and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried unto the Lord, God, lay not their sin to their charge. What forgiveness? That's higher heights of forgiveness. And to the highest degree, he was determined to carry out not to fear, Good. not to doubt, even unto death. He stood with the Lord. Yes. He stood with his purpose yes. to tell us, um, to declare Jesus to the people. Whether they hear or forbear, he did his job. Amen. Although it caused him his death, are we excited ourselves for the cause of Christ? Amen. Are we seeking to save our own life and our own selves? Take a minute. Even unto death, Stephen stood to his cause. He could have run away, he had legs. He could have called others to help him. He could have called his, his brethren or his deacon or his pastor or his or his, or his, his musicians. There are strong young men here to help. But he stood to the cause. Cause of Christ. Determination, how determine our way to walk with the Lord. Let's look at another point here. Determination through perilous situations. In Esther 5 and 4, Esther intercedes for her people against the plan for wicked desires of the intentions of a man to destroy them. It was a custom and law that anyone entering the, the king's inner court who is not summoned or called to be put to death. Yeah. Unless a king holds out his scepter. Yes. And that's serious business, you know. Yes. That is serious business because it doesn't matter who. Mm -hmm. Now, this was a difficult situation for Esther mm -hmm. because she was not called for about 30 days. However, with fasting, prayers, determination and confidence in God, she pressed on, saying, I will go in. And if I perish, I perish. I perish. Yes. That is determination yes. through perilous situations. Yes. Amen. Amen. But God, but God, he always stepped in. Yes. Because it's God's business. Yes. We are the people and the sheep of his pastors. Yes. We belong to him. We are not our own. So he always steps in. Yes. Always. He yes. steps out. And he allowed her to find favor and grace from the king to reveal the evil deeds of Amad and save the life of the people that were threatened by his plan and wicked devices. Mighty God. In Numbers 13, tells us about determination against opposing forces. Yes, my brothers and sisters, there are opposing forces, Amen. whether we like it or not. Amen. Amen. And it comes in any shape and form and place. 
Throughout the Israelites' journey through the wilderness, Moses sent out spies to the land. They reported that the land was fruitful, the milk and honey. Nevertheless, people were giants. We were like in their sight as grasshoppers. So when the people heard that, they continued the usual murmuring and rebellion, saying to Moses, and, and better you have left us in Egypt. Better you, you, are you going to take us here to kill us? You could have killed us in the wilderness. You could have killed us in Egypt. But you're going to take us here to go to that land where the giants are going to kill us? But Caleb and Joshua declared, it's like that, you know what? We are well able. Well able, yes. Well able. We can go. Not by our might. Not by our strength. But by the Spirit of God. Yes. And we will be able to overcome. The Lord will bring us into this land. Amen. So do not rebel against the Lord because God is with us. Oh, yes. Amen. And that's one thing we need to, um, to be assured that God is with us. Yes. Yes. What determination um, Caleb and Joshua had amidst the crowd murmuring, all the conditions and situations that were there. Two men with firm belief, yeah. with that intention, and with that purpose, make that decision that we are well able. Yeah. 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 Be assured, my brothers and sisters, we can do all things through Christ. Yeah. Because God is with us. Yeah. Yeah. He is the God of all possibilities. Yeah. Mighty God. And I personally have to muster up that willpower, strength, determination to know that whatever it takes to draw closer to the Lord, that's what I am willing to do. What about you? Yes. Because I've made up my mind. I've made my decision to serve the Lord. That not my will be done in my life, but God's will be done in my life. Because I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. So you do me anything you want to do, you are doing it to Jesus. Because I belong to Jesus. I have to make that decision to know that the Lord in the morning, in the evening, and in the night, when I sing to him, I'm singing from the depths of my heart, yes. saying yes to your will, yes to your way. I've decided to follow you, and I will not turn back. And so I can lift up my thoughts above my head, above the thoughts that hold me down. I can lift up my head above the doubts and fears that come upon me. And I can say, Lord, fill me with power to live my life yes. for you. Yes. So when situations come, and they will come, Amen. some come already and more is left to come. Amen. And when the struggles come, because persecution will come. Yes. The fiery darts will come. Yes. Doubt might set in. The struggles are real, my brothers and sisters. It's real, real, real. And they will come. Even sometimes they get so much in your heart and make you want to doubt. But you have to speak the word of God into the inner recesses of your heart and mind and soul and say like David in the psalm, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? So hope in God, for he is the help and strength of your countenance. You have to speak to yourself. You have to speak life into your own being. Hey, to keep that determination alive. Hallelujah. He is the source of my strength. And so I have that confidence that I have to have that determination. Instead of looking down and looking all around, 
I can say as I'm 121, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. To the hills. So my help. My help. My help. help. My help. My help. My help. My help. My help. In God, knowing full well that just as he was with Stephen, just as he was with Esther, just as he was with Elisha, those, just as he was with, with Hannah, when she prayed because she wanted a child and she was determined to get a child and she asked God for the child and God gave the child because of her determination, her decision, her intention. God came up for her. Yes. He will come up for me and you. Yes. Yes. Never leave or forsake us. We just have to be determined to hold on to the end. Knowing that, we can depend on him. Yes. Yes. We have the Father, his will. We have to make up our mind. We have to have that personal decision. And say from the depths of our hearts, I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever my love may be. Where thou goest, I will follow. Where thou lead me, I will follow. And I will gladly follow thee with that determination to hold on to the hand. For the, through the storms and the struggles, I have made up my mind to go all the way with Jesus. And so I press up. Daily, in my daily conduct, in my lifestyle, my commitment to the cause of Christ, and my decision to be with him when he comes to live eternally with him. And so, with that determination, I'll tell the world that I am glory bound. I'll tell the world that Jesus is in me. I'll tell the world that my determination, my intent to reach that goal, that's what I I'll tell the world that I'm on the battlefield for my Lord and I'll fight until I die. I'll never run away because I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And so I'll tell the world that I'm a child of the King. I'm a child of God. Right. You want to be saved? Right. 
it in the name of the Lord. Get in the word of the Lord. Get in it. Come in day with him. Yes. Open up your hearts. Yes. Let him abide in you. Yes. And like Adam, with that determination, purpose, and that intention, she made a decision that if I go to the Lord with my situation, he will take care. Yes. She prayed and she asked for a son. And he did provide him for her. Hallelujah. The scriptures that tells us that no good thing is even told from yes. men that put their trust in him. So if you trust in God, fully surrender your life to him. Fully, fully, F-U-L-L-Y, commit yourself to him. You ask him to teach you how to love. He will teach you how to love. You ask him to teach you how to forgive. He will teach you how to forgive. You ask him to get, give you the Holy Ghost. He will give you the Holy Ghost. You ask him for power from an eye. He will give you power from an eye. You ask him to keep you in perfect peace. That your mind may be stayed upon him. Just like Anna. Ask him for what she will. He will grant it unto you. Yes. Amen. It takes a personal walk. A made up mind determination to follow, suffer, and reign with Christ. It's not about friends. It's not about family. It's not about faith. It's not about title. It's not about position. It's a personal decision to walk with God. Despite the sufferings, which the sufferings are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Just like the athlete, when they're training, some get sprained toe, some get um, pulled muscle, some get um, their knees slip out, their hands slip out, but that did not stop them because they made the decision. I want to run in this championship. I am looking for a gold medal. So all those little things did not stop them. They pressed their way. Can we press our way for the Lord? Yes. Oh. We can say it from our hearts. And if you don't mean it, don't say it. But if you mean it, just say it in your heart. Lord, just a closer walk with thee. Just a closer walk Grant with thee. Jesus. Is my plea. This is my plea. Yes. Daily walking close, close to thee. Let it be. Lord, let How it determined be. are you to follow and continue with Christ? Through tribulation, through distress, poverty, sickness, persecution. Don't lie upon, treated unfairly with disdain. How determined are you to follow Christ? Will you give up all for Jesus? Yeah. Will you give up all to follow him? As the songwriter put it, all to Jesus. I surrender. I surrender. All to, all to him. I freely give.
And if anyone is on Zoom, I will be able also to give by sending it through a mail. Faith Holy Church of the Living God, 193 Putnam Avenue, Brooklyn, New York, 11216. Amen. You are now in the hands of our Usher Malik.
And next Sabbath, we have our Sabbath school at 10.30 a.m. And our main service begins at 12.30 p.m. And our speaker will be the evangelist Margaret Barrett. And as always, please remember to invite two people to all our services, both in person and on Zoom. Were there any birthdays that passed? Any anniversaries? Not seeing anyone, so service is now back in the hands of our evangelist. Amen. Thank you. Let's keep those announcements in mind as we go. Remember, please be on time for your own soul sake. For Jesus was never late. We're going to have our pastoral remarks from our Apostle Evans. Please stand to receive our Apostle Evans. Thank you. God bless you, be seated. Till I die. Spirit said to come against headaches today. 
Somebody know I'm talking right here. Am I talking right here, somebody? Hey, hey come on, come on. Somebody, somebody say you're dealing with headaches. And I was sitting there and the Spirit said, go up there when you stand up and said to headaches, the Lord rebuke you. Come on, somebody. I said, hold on, hold on. See, see, we got to have an determined mind. See, what, what I want to teach this trait is this. What's going to be our downfall is being quiet at the wrong time. See, I say this. One thing I can't stand is people loud at sport events and quiet in church. Amen, people of God. If we would come against that spirit of headaches right now, it would leave right now. You don't have to wait to go home and take call your two pills and call them in the morning. And we would just the power of the shout, be determined. Come on, people of God. It was like they were free right now. Somebody say, the Lord rebuke you. A headache is no challenge to God. Huh? We don't, I, I'm going to say, you don't have to sit up in God's church to suffer. And then I tell her, you don't have to sit up in God's church to suffer, but it's the house of prayer for all people. I sing that song, I cried, and he delivered me, and sit there and suffer. Amen, amen. So, but that's, that was all my the spirit was put upon me. Said, said, you got the quietest headaches today. Amen, amen. And those of you that have been dealing with headaches down through the week for various reasons, the Lord is delivering you today. Somebody would be thanking him. See, there's, there's something we do wrong. See, we wait for the headache to go away when we thank God. See, you don't wait for the headache to go away when we thank God. You thank God because He's here to get rid of it. The lepers didn't get cleansed at the priest, but somebody said, but well, while they were on their way. Amen. We praise God. I thank God once again for the ministry of this local congregation. We are blessed beyond measure. Amen. We are blessed. Amen. If Bob, I'm going to be honest as a pastor, it boggles my mind when visitors come in and seem like they appreciate what we have more than we ourselves. Amen. 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 We have this every week. Week after week, we get a different preacher come up, the same anointing. Come on, somebody. The power of God is in this place. God has anointed us with singers. Praise and worship. Come on, somebody. God has anointed us with musicians. Come on. See, you have to see. I thank God what we have in God has to learn to preach what we have in this church. There are churches that pays. Can I keep it real? There are churches that pays the ones that do it here for free. Oh, yeah, it, Amen. 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 And we get what we have here every week. There are people who are paid to do praise and worship. One time Lady Evans was invited to do praise and worship. To be then one time my grandson was in, was we have this here every week. We better appreciate who we have for God. Amen. 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 And I thank God for every member of Faith Holy Church of the Living God. We praise God for you and you and you and you. Don't think God doesn't see. God see. And not only does God see, as you can see, other people are seeing, they're watching, they're enjoying, and they're being moved by God. But whatever we do, don't ever get the big head. Amen. Stay humble. Stay humble. Say humble. Amen. We praise God. We praise God. Amen. As our Baptist Barrett said, we thank God for those that came with, with Sister Georgia. We're so happy to have you with us. We're so happy to have you with us. Amen. Please come again and be with us. We praise God. We thank God for our brother Jonathan Campbell that was here with us earlier and so forth. We thank the Lord for him. Amen. You always see me talking about 
the bishop that pulled me to the side when I first went before the board to become ordained and I was not at that time uh, approved and he, one of the bishops that pulled me to the side and spoke to me was his father, the Bishop Robert Alexander Campbell, amen. And so when you look at him, you see his father, he was just like his father, amen. And his father and Bishop Woods served together on the Apostle Board. And so we praise God. You never know who you have an effect on. Amen. Amen. You never know who you have an, an, an effect on. So be who you are. Let the Lord use you. And when you let the Lord use you, don't try to get glory. All the glory belongs to God. All the glory. If, if you preach and God use you, remember the glory belongs to God. If you sing and God use you, remember the glory belongs to God. If you play music and God use you, remember the glory belongs to God. Amen. But as someone said, just say, use me Lord in thy service. Draw me nearer every day because I'm willing to run on all the way. So we praise God. Stay encouraged people of God. And stay determined, stay determined, because whether you know it or not, after a message like this is delivered, there's going to be a trying of your faith. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. You better hear this real good. It's going to be a trying of your faith to see whether or not you really receive it. And, and it's not God trying you. It's the devil going to see if you really mean it when you say amen to the word of God. See, it's one thing when when... Touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor, touch your neighbor. But when you out there this week by yourself, you're not gonna have no way neighbor to look to. You better, you gotta. What your neighbor better be is your determination. Amen. Your determination. And I say this as I'm prepared to take my seat because we're getting close to the coming back of Jesus Christ. Yes. And it is God's will that none of us would be lost. Amen. But at the same token, it's the devil's will that all of us will be lost. And he knows that his time is not long, so he's going to bring up all type of devices that he can against us. See, we're looking for certain things. See, because he knows you're looking for certain things. Those are the things he's not going to use. He's going to use things that you least expect. He's going to use people that you least expect. Anything that he can do to throw you off track. So stay determined to hold on to Jesus. Stay determined to make it to the end. Because he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. So keep praying one for the other for the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. And I want to say, uh, with, uh, it, it was something today that was just tickling my ears when I hear Brother Keyshawn play it, honestly. I, 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 play, I pay attention to detail, but it was something about today when he was playing. I just kept looking over there. I just, you know, and I want God to bless this young man. I'm being pastoral right now. I want God to bless this young man. I want God to protect this young man. So, see, see, I'm keeping it real. I'm, keep, I'm, I'm being pastoral right now. I want God to protect him from the wiles of state. I so I wish somebody was with me. Ain't nothing with me on that. Ain't nothing with me. Amen. Because the devil know he is anointed, the plague, and you know when, when the, the, the demons was rising up, they didn't call for the drummer. They called for someone who can play that nice melody. Come on, so every now and then, we just might need Keyshawn to play something to call somebody. Amen. And I don't want us, and I'm talking good, I don't want us to have him here because he can play music. I want us to have him here because he's a star. Are you picking on him? No, I'm picking him up. That's what I'm here to pick him up. Amen. Brother Keyshawn, be encouraged. Listen to your pastor. Stay encouraged. Somebody, somebody look at Brother Keyshawn and say, stay determined. I, 
you know, I, when the Lord speaks to me, I speak what the Lord told me to say. He told me to encourage you today. He told me to encourage you today. I don't know why, but I'm just going to encourage you today. You are loved in this church. You don't have to go nowhere. In the wrong place is nowhere. You are loved in this church. God have you in this church for a reason. Stand and wait to see what he has you here for. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm not one of these pastors that people do this. You wait for somebody and something to happen in their life that you start talking about them. You're not their friend. Now y'all not being quiet. Now y'all being quiet. Now you're not their friend. Now everybody know Apostle Evans. If if Keyshawn missed too many services, I get questions. I want to ask about him. Amen. I want you to know your pastor cares about you. Your pastor cares about you, and the saints of the church cares about you. Not just your family, the church family cares about you. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. God will use you if you let him use you. And I'm not talking about just music. Come on, somebody. Somebody talk to me. Come on, come on. I wish I had some witnesses in the place. Amen. Amen. Of Tony, Michael, and Marshilla, I was the worst behaved of the three. But through all my misbehaving, I'm not saying that. Now, don't say that I said his, he misbehaving. So let me put that way in there. I'm talking about me right now. So when I use the word misbehaving, I'm not talking about Brother Keisha. I'm talking about Michael Jeffrey of the senior. I was the one who misbehaved in the family. But through all of my misbehaving, always at the church, they kept encouraging me to keep going on. They kept encouraging me to do things in the church. They didn't kick me to the side. They kept having me doing the devotional service. They kept me playing the drums because people kept pushing me and praying for me. Look where I am today. So if you care about people, too, somebody say if you care about people. If you care about people, you don't talk about them, you talk for them. And this church will grow beyond measures when we start holding up one another. You'd be surprised where this church can go. We hold one another. Amen. But all, all during the service, I don't know, for whatever reason, I kept hearing certain, I like, is he playing something different today? But see, somehow it just like, it was moving all in my ears like a melody was going on. And I heard all the other instruments but it was something today, by the way, that he was playing. Amen. And may God be with him. May Jesus be a fence of protection all around him. Somebody didn't touch on the group with me. Somebody touch on the group with me. Good. Uh, can I say this? You can't have my, you can't have my, you can't have my keyboard player. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Why? I feel I plead the blood. If I can let me come on, look. I feel I plead the blood. All right. You can't have my, you can't have my, you can't have my keyboard player. You can't have my, you can't have my. I feel I plead the blood. All right. All right. It's a Paul Shepherd that allow one of the sheep to get caught by the wolf. Y'all see, 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 get happy for blessings and money and so forth. This is good talk right here. Amen? Amen? It's a poor shepherd that allow one of the sheep to get caught by a wolf. And I'm not going to stand still let the wolf catch one of our own. Amen. We bless the Lord. Our Lady Tanya Chung Daily. Amen. Your New York pastor, your New York church family, we're going to miss you when you go visiting Jamaica. <laughs> when you go visiting Jamaica, we're going to miss you until you get back home. Are we church? We're going to miss you until you get back home to where you belong. Amen. Give greetings to Apostle Ricketts, Bishop Webster, Bishop Erskine, and the executive board of the great people of the island of Jamaica, let them know that your New York church family 
we said our love to them. Amen. God, pray for me in Jesus' name, and we carry on in the Lord. And we thank God for each and every one that was on the program to the day for his job. Well done. We celebrate you and you and you. God bless you in Jesus' name.
lift their hands where you are standing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, And this while they shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Oh, 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 oh,